He went from, I'm gonna kill you to, what's up? We chilling now. This could be you at home with him, chilling. I should show him a, the not proper way to pick it up because that's how you're gonna drop it. Picking him up like, look, I'm gonna, I got an idea, all right. Drop a comment below, should I get bit again? What's up guys, Brian's over there acting like he's ready but he's not and this is Jesse here at Freedom Breeder and I'm gonna show you guys how to properly pick up a ball python without without getting bit. So hopefully I don't get bit trying to show you guys how not to get bit but I'm gonna show you my technique of trying not to get bit every time I open a tray because in our warm rooms they always have feeding response and it's normal. Um, it's not the end of the world, they're obviously not venomous and it's only gonna give you a little bit of blood. It's not gonna hurt um, for these size snakes. I mean, maybe the bigger ones we have in here might give you a little bit more blood, maybe a little bruise, break a tooth off in you. Um, that's kind of normal, but it's not gonna kill you. Um, I think bee stings probably hurt a little bit more. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna jump right into this, show you guys how to pick up. We're gonna just pop open a bunch of trays. Hopefully I don't leave any open for Tyler, or I mean Alex in the morning and have a bunch of trays open, snakes for him to go find uh, in the morning. So. We'll just jump right into this, show you some of the smaller ones. Maybe on the next episode, we'll show you how to pick up adult ball pythons, big dogs, big ones, big, big snakes, I mean. All right, so this one's chilling. Doesn't have too much of a response, so me moving around in front of it's automatically gonna turn into a feed, re feed response, especially if I were to go and touch it. So what I would do every single time, I go and just touch the snake behind his back, it automatically goes into the ball python stage where it turns into a ball. Now. It's uh, pretty much indefensive, so if you put your hand in front of it, it's gonna probably try to bite. But as long as you keep tapping the front of its head, it'll just chill out. So there's always a chance that it might try to bite you when they're young like this. Um, sometimes even when they're older, just depending, sometimes some of them are pretty angry and flip out. But this one's really calm. This would be a really nice snake for a pet. This one's uh, not really in a feeding response either. It's probably because we have the, the door open letting cold air in right now. It's probably where all the flies are coming from as well. We forgot to slap all the flies before this episode. So um, so in this situation, I'll just always go to tap the top of its head and then get it into a ball stage. So it's uh, protecting itself the way a ball python does. That's where they get their name, ball python. Python regis the species, they're also known as royal pythons, where we import them from. Um, so a good way to uh, get your snake comfortable with you is give it little chin pets. You, know, you could do it with finger, however you, you feel comfortable. Um, and then sometimes, once it starts getting all fired up, you just put it away, try again tomorrow. Because sometimes they like to be left alone, just like you, I'm sure. This one's sort of not in its feeding response. I mean, like, for those of you, these would definitely not be, like, uh, anything to worry about. Let's see. So this is all a little bit, like, in a stiff state of mind. So what I do is just give it a little tap to the head. Not hard. Just to let it know it's right here in your hands. And it doesn't need to be stiff. As long as they feel secure, they're always calm. Probably need to cut my fingernails. Okay, let's try to find one that's like a little fired up or let's just look for something pretty cool. I'll pick one up and shed because a lot of times, nah, I want to do that on a different video to show when the snake's in shed, when it's going into shed. We'll go over that in another episode. We'll do that next time. See if we can find one off. This one looks like a fired up one right here. See how it's holding its head up instantly like, what's up dog? I'm gonna get you, see? It's already all fired up because it's automatic feed response. It's probably hungry. This is where you gotta be pretty quick to do the taparooski. So you gotta taparoo, taparoo, taparoo. This guy's getting uh, super fired up. Grab him, let him know that. Don't put your hand in front because it's automatically just gonna go into feed response. So you gotta keep your finger close to its mouth so it can't strike out. So this is a situation where he's still stiff, so he's still defensive right now. This would be a defensive bite. 
Okay, so he's still a little stiffy. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. I mean, look at him. He's stiffy. I mean, if you can't see that, Brian's just laughing, but he can chill out. He just needs to chill. So he's starting to, to relax a little bit. All right, so he's in the ball stage of the ball python. So where he balls himself up to be, um, stop laughing. <laughs> no, I did. You were thinking. He's in the ball stage of the protection to protect himself from, this is defense, not offense no more. He went from offense, hella serious, all the way to chilling. Now he's relaxing, he's comfortable. So, I mean, you hold him, but then once he wants to get like flighty, try again the next time. And you keep working with him. So this would be a feisty one that you'll work with and it'll eventually work its way out of this stage. But this Super is cool a badass paradox, coral glow, bungo, fuego, head G stripe. That's it. So that's a feisty one. See, I dropped him. Now he's like, what's up, dog? He's like, I want to get picked back up. You know, he's showing his face now. It's just working with him. Obviously, we don't work with them all like this every day or every week. Because then we'll have no time to clean them and feed and freshen their water. That is a job for you guys who are purchasing the snakes from us to work with your snakes. So, just so you guys know, you don't have to ask in the Morph Market inquiries, are these snakes feisty or do they bite? You don't have to ask those questions because 90% of the time, we don't know 100%. And I'm giving you a perfect example of how to take care of that issue. So that way you can work around that. See, he's not even hiding his head. He's comfortable. He knows that he's safe. We're not here to hurt him. Usually they hide their head when they're um, scared because that's how they protect themselves. But see, he can, st he can still touch them and he's not hiding it. He's comfortable. He went from, we're gonna kill it. Um, he's all, we're. No, he went from, I'm gonna kill you to, what's up? We chilling now. So you, this could be you at home with him, chilling. Oh, this one's fired up too. But this one's got food in it. Like he's plumped up pretty good. So we're not gonna mess with him. We might make him regurgitate. So it's another thing. Don't mess with your snakes when they're fully loaded with food. So this one looks like he could be a little fired up a little bit. Let's just give him a little tap -a to the back, like inch and a half to two inches of his neck. Let him know we're here. They're, I'm not gonna kill him. Pick him up. And he instantly goes to chilling. This is a badass snake, by the way. Fuego. What is it? Super Blast. Just a Super Blast? Possibly Mojave. Probably is Mojave. It's gonna be going up for sale. It's already had a couple meals. Super Fire. No, not the gene. Just a super fire snake. So you see, he's chilling. You just let him know, I'm not here to kill him, and we're not food. Boom. Let's try to find a dickhead snake. Who knows what this one's gonna be like? All right, let's see what we're gonna pop off right here. So we got a, um, a fire chocolate orange dream, possibly calico. I don't think so, calico, but possibly. So a lot of times, if you go, you just want to be out of the striking. Oh. You want to be out of the striking distance. Look, now he's, you got the hissing reaction. It's a whole different attitude. You touch him, he hisses. It's, an also, it's also a defensive mechanism. Breathing heavy. Okay, he's calm, he knows we're here. Chilling. This is it. He's not sure yet because we just picked him up. Probably his uh, first time being held like this and being um, put on camera, so he might be a little shy. Look at him, he's trying to hide his head. So, think about you going on camera first time. You might do the same thing. Stage fright. Look at that awesome pattern though. Billy, I love Orange Dream. It's 
especially mixed with the chocolate. Fire. You know, he wants to roam around, wants to move around, but he wants to come back. He's like, wait a minute, was that food? He got all tense for a second. And they like to go to the dark area. That's why we use gray tubs. So if you ask me that question, I'm gonna tell you use gray, not semi-clear, because you see, he automatically went for the dark area. That's where he's comfortable. So that's how to properly pick up ball pythons and the different attitudes that they have. So you've seen one hiss, and then you've seen another one automatically striking, striking, striking. Um, it's all about letting them know you're there and that you're not food. Because every time we open the tray, it's only food. Because with all the snakes here, we can't do what we just showed you to every single snake. Or else uh, we will never be able to feed them, clean their water every week, clean out their poops once a week, and freshen their bedding, all the different stuff that's needed. Um, so, therefore, I at least get to show you how to do it when you purchase a snake from us. Um, this is the proper way to pick up your ball python. So that way you don't, you're don't you not trying to pick them up while, the, like, try, let me show you, I should show them a, the not proper way to pick it up because that's how you're gonna drop it. Okay, so this one's fired up. Okay, so this is an improper way to pick up a snake. So you've seen, I tap it, get it bunched up a little bit so that you can secure the body. This snake is fired up, thinks I'm feeding it food. So it's automatic defense. So if you're gonna go and tap them back here, He's gonna, he's gonna come right back at you more than likely because this is where he can still reach you. So if you go to try to pick him up like this, he's gonna keep striking and more than likely you're gonna drop him. So most of the time he'll keep striking because he's still in the distance to strike at you. But if you were to go and tap, uh, tap him from behind where he can't get you, he automatically goes to the defense oh, or bites you. <laughs> Oh, fuck. All right. Let's not add that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, maybe I should still add it because I was doing it wrong the whole time from the beginning. So that's probably why I got bit. So Brian, maybe just add that in there. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, but... Um, so obviously that's the improper way. That's why I got bit. So um, you don't try to go and grab it where it can still get to you and... Once you do that, it's already in a position where it's like, I can get to you because you're already messing with it. Look, he's super fired up now. And I and I got bit. I could probably still get him out of this stage, but more than likely, I'll probably get bit again. Drop a comment below. Should I get bit again? No. <laughs> okay, so he's super fired up now. So the only way to do it is go really fast and get to him where he can't get you. So that's kind of like the best way to do it when you're at a position where you're like, damn, I'm going to get bit again and I'm so scared. That's the way to do it. Get them back into the defensive state and where it's protecting itself. So obviously you've seen when I went to try to pick him up and got in a position where he's able to reach me no matter what way I go, I got bit. So that's the improper way to pick it up is from the back end, which is like this half of the body and then grabbing it like this is no good because you're not securing the snake. And more than likely, it'll try to bite you any way it can. And that's probably 90% of the time you're gonna drop the snake. So a lot of times when you do pick up the snake, even if you have it like this, try to keep it low to wherever it can drop. So if you do accidentally drop the snake, it's close. But not like this where you're over here, unless you're really comfortable with yourself, and you're able to drop it that far, it can really injure the snake. As you saw, it bit me, baby blood, didn't hurt, little shock. Yeah, it made you think, oh yeah, what the heck? Um, defensive, it didn't bite me and then wrap around me like I was a mouse or a rat. So it's not like the end of the world if you get bit, it doesn't hurt. Um, it's just kind of like, uh, hey, what the heck? You know what I mean? And that is the improper way to pick up your ball python. Um, as you saw, I got bit, so I guess that's probably what most of you guys are waiting for anyway, is for me to get bit. So at least you guys got to see that part. Um, it was embarrassing for me, probably funny for you guys, um, but at least I was able to show you how to get it out of that state once you've gotten bit and you feel like, oh, I don't even want to pick the snake up anymore. I'm scared of it. It's not that serious. You just got to be fast and just get it to the defensive state. And that's it. I mean, um, I'll probably do more videos. I mean. 
Getting bit by a ball python, baby ball python is not gonna hurt at all. It's just gonna shock you a little bit. So don't be scared, baby ball python. So it's not venomous, always keep that in mind. It's not gonna kill you. So hopefully you got to see how to properly pick up the snake and how to improperly pick up the snake. And hopefully that helps you guys. Maybe we'll do another one later down the road. Um, and if you watch closely, I'll try to see if Brian can occasionally, whenever I'm picking up the snakes, show you how to do it. Also, we will work with the big snakes. Sometimes uh, those are a little more feisty because they come out like ready to slam some food. So we're gonna have to pick up the big snakes once they've already eaten. And most of the time they've stayed in there without being held every day like this situation. And they are want to flight. They want to just get away right away back to somewhere dark and uh, secluded where they can feel comfortable. And if you work with them a lot, you will be able to work out of the bitey stage because um, they'll get comfortable with you. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment below. Slap that like button to show your support. Turn on those notifications to be notified for the next video. Maybe you'll see me get bit in the next video. And if you guys have not subscribed, please do because I'm going to show you guys a bunch more cool stuff. We're on the a bunch of awesome, awesome new adventures here at Freedom Breeder. We've got flies attacking us nonstop. It's starting to get cold over here. And uh, you guys all have a great day. Okay, these flies are driving me nuts. Are we good? Yeah. All right, so that's uh, picking up ball pythons. Um, hold on, how can we do it? Go back to where I was, as if I was closing it. <laughs> I'm here. For real, now we're not getting anywhere. This video is fucking... Alright, so look. He's now in the ball stage of the ball python. <laughs> How is that so funny? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> hey, are we get, are we gonna get anything done yeah, here? Sorry, dude. Oh my god, I do. Between the stiffy and the balls. The like. stiff balls. <laughs> uh, get it out. It got the stiff dick. <sighs> Should just be blown, oh. huh? Yeah, right. I Don't am. fucking lie to me. I'm ready. Oh shit. Yeah. All right. This will be available to you at ninety nine dollars. No, I'm just kidding. No, definitely not. <laughs> All right, so we'll jump right back into another one. Okay. Fucking flies. <laughs> All right. He's probably hungry and he's like, I'm a badass motherfucker, don't fuck with me. Um, probably don't put all that in there. Oh, it's gonna be the best though. Okay, so, do not, Brian, I don't give a fuck what you say, I better not go in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm serious, fucking guy, quit laughing. I'm He's hella that, stiff. I won't put that part in there. I'll just put you saying that. What? Yeah. This is just say, you saying don't put that in there. I won't show what happened. I'll just put in the part where you said don't put that in there. No, don't <laughs> even put that in there. I don't even. We're trying to teach, not fucking it's look like. It's a blooper. No, it's not even as a blooper. Teach mistakes happen sometimes. Because he's going in the ball balls. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, are we gonna get anything done? You can cut this shit out. You can laugh about it later when you're cutting it out. I'm trying. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> that must be the when the shit hits hard. <laughs> okay, well, the stiffy is relaxing now. He's going to a flaccid state. <laughs> okay, now listen.